What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In preparation for this race this weekend, I've got, I don't know if I'm gonna get these done, I'm gonna try to, but these are little spacers that are actually gonna give the car a little bit more room in between the tire and the fender. So I got these online, they just sit underneath the BMR springs, or actually on top of the BMR springs, sorry. And uh, they'll give us a little bit more room because if you guys know, the S550 body rubs really close to the 15s, so that'll give us a little bit more room. But anyways, today, I'm gonna try and do some clearancing on the hood because the hood is actually still rubbing the exhaust and it's ruining my very nice titanium exhaust that streetcar joe built so we got to do some clearancing there and i just got to switch this cutting wheel out to a grinding disc and we're going to do some grinding that way we don't shoot metal shavings all over the place and if they get on the track hawk you know who cares right but uh yeah we're going to cover up some of these metal shavings hopefully this blanket doesn't catch on fire while we'll be burning my brother's house down no big deal insurance right so this part right here on the inside of the hood is still touching the exhaust and it actually has scratched it up a pretty good amount. So I'm going to try and clearance this down a little more, clearance the trim ring, and then I think this little nut is still hitting. So we're getting pretty close to just cutting that nut off. It's never fun to get your nuts cut off, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to try and grind that down, see if we can clearance this a little better for the exhaust. And so we quit ruining this titanium. off a decent amount here. I need to try and hit the trim ring now. That one's a little harder. Streetcar stuff, man. Mm -hmm. Trying to clearance this hood. It keeps scratching my exhaust. Streetcar stuff. So I've taken off a pretty decent amount. Let me get a little more. Oh. Ah. That's probably good. Now let's see if I can clearance. bunch of metal shavings on this blanket so I don't want to shake it out but I also don't want to take it off yet in case I gotta do more grinding. So I'll just fold it over there. So I know you guys are not gonna be able to see this but that's where it was. I know you guys can't see it but down there the nut was actually the piece that was hitting it. So let's see if we can... I think we're actually good. 
if anything, it's definitely that nut right there. And so we either take that bolt out and replace it with something else, but it's definitely the nut that was hitting. It's never good when your nuts are hitting your exhaust. It's never a good thing. Let's get this out of here with all the metal shavings. See? Engine bay is still nice and clean. No metal shavings. There's just a bunch of metal shavings up here. But we'll clean those off here in just a second. But so you guys can see, it was scratching the shit out of my exhaust. Sucks. Hopefully we can polish that out. I don't know. Titanium is sensitive. So to me, it looks like it's clearance now. Doesn't sound, before you could actually hear it when you would shut the hood, you would hear it hit that. So I think we're good. I'm gonna see, hopefully we'll be able to polish that out. I don't think you can take like sandpaper or anything to it, but Mr. Streetcar Joe thinks that we might be able to polish that out. It might not look perfect, but if we can just get some of those scratches out. So yeah, that nut was definitely hitting there. I wish I would have fixed that earlier and just totally would have saved my nice exhaust. But we do have an extra piece of titanium, so we could always redo the tip if we need to, because you want your tip looking good. So a lot of people have been asking me to kind of show how the car works with all these fancy buttons and gauges and stuff. So today I need to check the trans fluid, which means I need to drive the car around and get it up to temp and then come back and check it while it's idling. Plus I'm trying to check a few other things. So I thought today would be a good time to show you guys how the car works because it is a little different being that it was an auto car and now it has a turbo 400. So because it does have a turbo 400, Lund had to flash the PCM to think to make the car think it has a manual PCM. So essentially this car now has a manual PCM. And when you have a manual PCM, well the clutch needs a clutch signal. The car needs a clutch signal in order to start the car. So pull the left handle, this little left paddle, it's your shift paddle, pull that and the car thinks that's the clutch, put your foot on the brake, and the car is on Ignite E90, so of course when it's cold out like it is today, I think it's 40 degrees, it does not like to start. Just give it a sec, trust me. Alright, this is the one, I guarantee it. Uh, it was close. It's quite loud if you ask me. So just gotta let it warm up for a couple minutes. Obviously it's pretty cold out today. I wanna say it's uh, 30 degrees out. This is not a good time to be driving this car. So if you have an ice tank like I do in the back, you definitely want to make sure you have coolant in there because the lines will freeze and you will break some shit back there. So uh, the car sits in the front garage for that reason. It's a lot warmer up here. It actually stays about 60, 70 degrees up here because it's connected to the house. The back garage, I would definitely put coolant in the car because it just gets way too cold back there. So kind of explain what we've got going on here. The reason why my traction control and the ABS light is on, the airbag lights on, tire pressure monitors on, all that stuff has been unplugged. So I unhooked the ABS plug up front, which takes off total traction control and it takes off the ABS. I unhooked obviously the airbags because of the Kirkies and the tire pressure monitor system. I obviously don't have any TPSs, TPMSs in the car. So we've got the end gauge. I need to change some of the things I have logging since I was messing with it the other day. But typically, I now have boost pressure on here, which I don't need to watch because I have it right here on the GFB boost controller. But I've got oil pressure, lambda, and just regular temperature. I had um, the IATs on there, but I do have the IATs up here. But I'll probably put the IATs back on here. I've got the trans temp, which I'm just getting a plug from Joseph's tonight so we can get that running. But uh, those are essentially the things I look at. Everyone's kind of looking at everything differently. This is my shift light. It's set to, I think it's set to like 68, 6900. 
I can shift at 7,500, but we kind of figure with the lag of seeing the light and then actually shifting, it'll get us to like, it's gotten us to like 72, 73, so that's why we have that set a little bit lower, because obviously if you had to have it set at 75, you're gonna end up shifting at like 77, 78. So we've got that shift, the shift light set around like 68, 6900, and uh, in order to go in reverse for this specific Turbo Horner, now all Turbo Horners are different, this one, you've got reverse and then neutral, and the trans brake actually activates the reverse. Now, some Turbo 400s might be different, but the spec sheets for my Turbo 400, they want me to be in neutral and then use the trans brake button to actually engage reverse. That gives it full line pressure, I guess, for reverse. So, reverse is engaged. And we've got the Billet Motion Raceworks parachute handle over here, which is now finally hooked up as well. So no backup camera anymore, no backup sensors, which I don't really need. I just gotta make sure I pay attention. Okay, so then first is just you pull down one, and then you got second, pretty easy. So this is a reverse valve body, so you actually shift down instead of forward. Everyone has their preference, but this is actually how JPC sells the kit. So I'm not sure if they even sell the regular pattern, but this is a reverse pattern valve body so just so you guys know I used to have so we've got the trans brake up here and reverse obviously you don't want to hit that while you're driving and then on the left here the red button is the bump so when I'm staging the car I have a Joseph or someone pull me about six to eight inches before the first uh, line and then I pull myself to the first pre-stage and then that's when I get on the trans brake because that'll hold me from moving I can get off the brake and then I'll actually use the bump to bump to the second line then at that point i'll let off the bump when i feel or when i ignite the second bulb and then i will let off the trans brake obviously trying to get a good reaction time and now we've got the green button set as scramble so i don't know if you guys can see it but i'll press scramble and you can see the red scramble button actually illuminates On. it stays on we've got it staying on for about 10 seconds you can change the time however much boost you want to run all that good stuff so that's pretty much how everything's set up right now and i know you guys are probably like dave make a hit real quick it's 30 degrees out <laughs> i will literally go over there i will go over there i will go to the moon <laughs> but it definitely will not do anything in 30 degrees trust me so this car also because we have the triple pumps in the back I don't know if we need to lower them a little bit um, because when you set the pumps up you kind of set them at your own distance because they just give you a certain amount of hose and then you cut the hose for each pump and so the way that however low the pumps are right now I can't run any less than half a tank in the car or else the car will uh, be starving for fuel so which is not a good thing because that will cause your car to go lean so just things to note for this car specifically like I said we could probably drop the pumps a little bit lower in the tank, but honestly, I think in future, we'll just get a smaller fuel cell because anytime you're running more gas, you're adding weight to the car. So I think a gallon of gas is like eight pounds per gallon. So if you've got even three extra gallons, that's already 24 pounds. Like it adds up pretty quickly. And when you're trying to get as light as possible, especially with these new cars, these new cars aren't light to begin with. So they're already, hard to get light so you're kind of looking for everything that you need so now that we're kind of driving around I mean it's super cold out today but this little switch down here is for my trans fan and the ice tank pump so I've got to flip that on make sure I turn it on obviously every pass and what I'll do is sometimes I'll leave it on a little bit longer after the pass just to keep the fan going and keep the ice tank going um, and then that way we can pre-chill the car as well So there's definitely a lot more to do with this car than any car I've ever owned, but that's kind of why I wanted this car. I wanted to kind of progress to the next level, and this is the car that I want to take to that next level. So it's a really good thing that people are probably wondering why I deleted the radio and the AC right there. Well, it's because these are things I need to start getting used to paying attention to all the time instead of just looking at logs at the end. Uh, and it's really easy 
to change something really quick if I'm in the staging lanes. I've got my end gauge right here. I've got my boost gauge right there. I mean, boost controller. And so I can literally change everything on the fly. So if I'm in the staging lanes and I'm strapped up, it's really hard to move around. So with everything right here within reach, I can just easily change a setting or change the tune, whatever I need to, because my end gauge has all my other tunes on it. So if a new tune, if I don't feel like it's gonna work, or maybe the track goes away, someone spills down the track and I wanna turn it to my previous tune and then maybe turn the boost down, I can do all that while I'm still strapped up. But if I didn't have everything right here within reach, I'd either have to unstrap or hook up a laptop. So that's really why I have everything right here. This is everything I need. Um, you know, in order to make the car faster and to be more successful with the car. this car it does not bother me driving this around town obviously if you're gonna drive it every day you'd probably throw the radio or the AC back in but it's so funny even when I had the radio and the AC I never used that stuff it just I don't know I the town we live in is pretty small like any time you need to go somewhere it only takes five or ten minutes so I never even have time to turn the radio on or turn the AC on I just I don't know I just never used it so for me and what I wanted to do with the car, obviously I want to race the car more than daily drive it. So it was an easy transition for me. So I wanted to show you guys just a little trans brake and bump. So I'm just gonna show you guys. So you roll up to the first light, get on the trans brake, let go of the brake, and now you just floor it and that'll get you on the two step and then we'll just use this to kind of creep up. Make sure if you're ever testing this in your driveway, do not let go of the trans brake, let off the gas first. <laughs> so as you guys could tell, like it barely, barely moves. It just creeps, creeps forward because it's got a, I have a smooth stage bump box in here. So it's super smooth. It's got a real slight creep to it, which works out perfectly in my favor. But now I'm gonna let the car idle for a second. I'm gonna check the trans temp fluid. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button. I'll see you guys on the next one.